Of all the machines in the shop, I think the bandsaw has the most hidden dangers. Because these guys are such easy machines to use, you don't expect there to be a lot of kickback and other problems that come with these machines. But these machines become ferocious if you don't use them properly. Using something like a log on the surface will yank, it'll break your blade. I've had blades that have gotten stuck in logs that I had to cut the blade off because I couldn't get it out of the log. It is a very dangerous thing to run anything that, that's spherical on the top of this, as well as anything that's not completely flat to the top. Anything like this can create some very serious problems. There are ways to use this machine, but you really have to be careful about how you use it. I've created something that I think will help with somebody that wants to use something that's rounded or that has an odd shape on the bandsaw. I made this jig a few years ago, and the way it works is that you're always giving a log or something that's uneven two different surfaces. That means if I have something that's slightly rounded, as long as I've got two different contacts with the surface, I am much better off than if I were to try to run this through without anything and just having a single point on the surface of the table. Best practice is not to use anything round with band saws, but I'm gonna show you this project that I think can really help with people that want to cut logs and things like that with their band saw. Before we get started, I will point out that I do have an advanced version that I made. It uses a lot of spline joints. If you'd like to make it yourself, you can watch that video, but we're gonna make a really simple version anyone can make. I've got all my pieces cut and the dimensions are all on the website. It's all pretty straightforward. If you look at my pieces, you can see that they're all kind of these mix match pieces. Sometimes you can buy pine boards that are all mixed and matched together and I've never had a problem with them. I actually think that they're a little bit more stable. This happened to be a 12 by eight for like $15, so it was pretty cheap. But I assume at this point that you have all the pieces cut and ready to go. Let's get started. We're gonna start off with the four pieces that are nine and a quarter inches wide. We'll set the other pieces aside for now. Go ahead with the first piece and I'm gonna find the center. So nine and a quarter inches is four and five eighths. If we cut that in half, I'll go ahead and put a speed square on here, put it on that mark. I'm just gonna draw a line up maybe an inch, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna grab my speed square again and I'm going to slide this over so that my angle, my 45 degree angle is, is this way. And I'm going to find the, the number five. And this is where I want to draw a line. I'll flip this over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So find the five. It's very, very easy. Now we'll take the three other pieces and we're just going to stack them. So we'll use some double-sided tape to stack them all together. With those lined up, we're gonna take it over to the bandsaw and we're gonna cut this V out. First thing that you should always do whenever you stack wood like this is to make sure that your table is square with the blade. I just check to make sure there's no light at the top or the bottom that this just fits flush against the blade. Obviously, if we don't pay attention to where the blade is, we're gonna end up having pieces that are going to be thicker on the top or thinner on the bottom, and we don't want that. Now, really take your time here and cut as close as you can to the line. Again, always make sure that everything's lined up. We want this to be really accurate here. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna cut out this little spot right here where the points come together. We'll do that because later on when we go to put everything together, Sometimes that point can throw everything off. It's not a whole lot. It's just a little bit of a nibble there. We're gonna take our two bed pieces now, the six and a quarter inch and the seven inch, and they are gonna go on like this. When you put it together, you're gonna have an even V across here. Our first two plots are gonna be three eighths away from both sides, and that's because I'm using three quarter inch wood. If you're using a different thickness, you'll wanna find the center. So I got three eighths on the sides. Now we're gonna find the center of this. So it's 12 inches. We'll go to six, an inch over. And then we're going to do another three eighths over. So right there, and that's gonna be my first point. And then I'll go three eighths this way, right there. And that'll be my second point. We're gonna put these together like this. So it's gonna go like that and go like that. And then we'll cut that center channel out on the in the one side. So we really wanna make sure that this has support. So we, we're gonna add those two columns right there. 
I'm gonna use my speed square again. I just wanna make sure I do not forget where those are. Of course, we got that, this. So later on, we're gonna be screwing these onto the columns. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the holes out now and get them ready for later on. With our seven inch piece, we're just gonna come two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom. If you'd like to check out the marking gauge, it's on the website, but this is really helpful for things like this. With my other piece, I'm gonna come down two inches from the top. Now keep everything looking symmetrical. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to five inches. We put these together, you can see that they look evenly spaced. Oh, and we are going to do the edges, I forgot. So we'll do the, everything that we've already done with the edges. I'll be using number six, and they're one and one fourth inches long. But right now we're gonna go ahead and drill these out. If you're using softwood, I would go with uh, 3 fourths of an inch. If you're using a hardwood, use an eighth of an inch. If you're using number sixes. Oh, and before I forget, we need to go back and use an awl on each point. Something that took me years to learn to use, but I never make mistakes now. All right, now we're gonna take our boards. I've got my seven inch piece here. I've got it on the top. I've lined up where the columns are, but we're gonna be using some hot glue. I know it sounds funny, but just trust me on this. Once all your pieces are lined up, and it's really important that they're lined up, we'll move the piece forward like this, and then we're just gonna add some glue. And this is just long enough that we can put our screws in. Once that's cooled off, we'll flip it around and we're gonna just do the same thing. I'll add my glue. Give it some time to cool off before you let go. We'll go ahead and flip this over and see how it looks. That looks pretty good. Flip it back over. And now we're just gonna go through and we're gonna drill the holes out and add some screws. We'll go ahead and put it on our base now, and there shouldn't be any rocking of any kind. If there is any rocking of any kind, you're gonna to wanna to add a shim to the bottom of it, which will keep it from doing that. We'll set this aside now, and we're going to concentrate on our bottom base piece. I've got a locking miter bar that will fit in the slot. It'll have a cut in it, and then a bolt will go inside of it, and then as you turn a knob, it'll lock it in place. There will be another knob on this side, and this just basically holds this to that, that piece. Now you could do the exact same thing on both sides. You could have two different locking bolts if you wanted to, but I really find that the one that I have works just fine. We're gonna find the center of this, which is 12 inches, so we're gonna go to six inches. From the center, we're gonna go two and three eighths out on either side. The bolts that we're gonna be using are a quarter of an inch, but we want this to be able to slide freely in it, so we're gonna make our slots two and five sixteenths. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure over five sixteenths. Then I'll take my speed square. Now I'll measure five inches in, and that is where I wanna cut up to. So we'll go ahead and cut this now. There's one thing I need to mention here. Depending on your knob, you might wanna actually move your grooves over a little bit farther. My knob actually fits it doesn't have a problem turning. This is a store-bought knob. It works, but if you have a larger one, you might want to expand the, the slots over a little bit. The center of this, again, is six inches. The miter slot bar is nine and a half inches, so we're gonna go four and three-fourths in. Now that I've got my line there, I'll lift this up and put it on top. Because my slot is five sixteenths, I can now take a five sixteenths bolt, and it should fit inside of it. I'll find the center of my miter slot bar. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a tap so I know where it's at. And now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. And those are my marks. I'll go ahead and use an awl and find the center of that. On one of these sides, I'm gonna go three inches up. So right about there, my square and make a mark so I know later on where to cut to. There we go, I'll know where to cut later on. And then on the other side, it's just gonna be my quarter inch bolt. I'll go ahead and drill both of these out at a quarter of an inch, as well as adding my cone shape with a countersink.
You'll need a cotter pin that will fit inside of the kerf that you just made. It really doesn't need a whole lot of strength. It just needs a, enough to hold it a little bit to pull in and lock the, the bar. With my quarter inch bolt, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a slot with my hacksaw that will fit the 16th inch cotter pin. I'm using epoxy here, but you could very easily use hot glue. It really doesn't take a whole lot to hold this in place. After I've glued it, I'll go ahead and use some snips to cut off the loop. The epoxy is cured. This fits inside the slot. I've got my other bolts over here. This is pretty much what it looks like. It slides in right like that. If it's a little too tight, you can always just cut a little bit of the channel out to make up for it. Now we're going to attach the cradle to the base. Take my bar off, flip it over. Once again, drill, add screws. And you probably don't have to add a lot either. If we look down at the top, we're going to once again, measure over that half distance that we did. So it was three eighths for mine. So I'll go ahead and make a mark right there. And then it's gonna be the same on the other side. I'll take a ruler, I'm gonna lay it flat, and make my mark right there. It's important to note here, when we cut this, you wanna make a cut down to the end, stop the machine. Then you wanna make another cut all the way down to the end, stop the machine and then we'll break this off. If you try to go in and cut it off, this piece can slam down damaging your, your bandsaw or even hurting you. So we wanna make sure that we just make a straight cut, stop, straight cut, and stop. Now I can go ahead and break it off. There really isn't a whole lot there. And I'm gonna come in and just use a chisel to break the rest of it. And that's all there is to it. It's a really simple project. It works. I've been using this for several years now, but let me show you a few things so that you're safe. The one thing that really worried me about making this project was that somebody was going to abuse the way it's used. If you're taking a log and you plan on holding it against this side of the plate to cut, don't make this jig. It's not gonna be safe for you. The only way that this is safe is if there are two points of contact at all times with the log. That means if I want to cut this corner off, I move the corner so the blade is just right at that tip, and then I lock everything down, and then I run it through. The second thing is, you do not want to cut off a lot at each time. You really only want to cut off a little tiny bit. We're not looking to contour things, which is what a lathe is for. We're just looking to break things down so that we have smoother edges that'll be safer with the lathe. If you put your blade in the center of the table, you can cut like this. This is possible to cut. I've done it several times. I don't think there's any risk with it. You really need to get it halfway in and then pull it around from the back side. You'll have both supports, so you shouldn't have a problem with that. Another bad surface is if you were to try to take this and cut something like this. You're putting the, the crevice part down in here and it can become a wedge. It really is all about that round curve. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Tell me if you're gonna make this. All the instructions, the step-by-step -step everything is on the website. That'll be in the description. This is all a labor of love. I love doing this. I love being able to provide information. So give me a thumbs up if you like this and come back again.